So there's some industries in Canada that are already saturated. So you decided that you wanted to go back to school, but you're not sure which career path you wanted to pursue. In this video, we picked five career paths that are in high demand and will be in the next decade or so in Canada. So if you want to find out about those, then keep watching. Hey, my name is MC. And my name is Felix. And we are Esli Banner and our goal is to help aspiring international students to navigate their career path here in Canada. If you're new to our channel, make sure that you are subscribed. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure that you like this video. So in this video, we are going to talk about trades and engineering. And most of our international students who are coming here to study, most of them, they thought that, you know, enable for you to make a lot of money so you have to be working in a corporate world or go to toronto or go to vancouver and work for big companies but not all people are interested in getting a high paying uh, corporate office job where they had to go to university for many years before some people like to work with their hands they want to be outside and they don't want to study forever and in Canada, there's actually options where you can do that and still make a decent amount of money. Yeah, and I've encountered some international students as well who felt the same that, oh, I don't want to work in, you know, in corporate. I want to work with my hands. So if you're someone like that, keep watching and make sure that you finish this video until the end because we are going to give you the industries for trades and engineering and as well as the schools and programs that you can explore. So at first we're going to talk about trades and apprenticeships. The way it works with apprenticeships and trades in Canada is that at first you take what's called a trades foundation certificate at a college or university and these usually go for about one year, close to one year. Then you start working as an apprentice which there's apprentice level two, three, and four. Now, during your apprentice years, you still have to go to school, but it's only like four to eight weeks uh, in each year. And then eventually you can take your uh, exam to become a red seal in that trade. But it doesn't necessarily take a year for each apprentice year because it's based on the amount of hours of work that you did before you can move on to the next level. Now, each time you get into a new apprentice level, you also get an increase in your salary. And most trades are unionized in Canada, which means that they have very good benefits and a high wages as well. So the first one is the electrician. Now, as an electrician, you can work in many different industries as, for example, industrial, manufacturing, home building and residential. You can be in repairs and maintenance. And the average, the median salary in Canada for an electrician, now that's all of Canada, is $30. Mm -hmm. And you can make later up to $40 to $50 per hour. Wow. And for the program, there's a program that you can take for one year or two years. And you can check out Centennial College, MITT, Algonquin College, New Brunswick Community College if you want to stay in Atlantic. So it really depends which province you wanted to, to stay in. But the average tuition fee would, for the programs that I will be mentioning in this video will be around uh, 10 up to 18,000 Canadian dollars for a one-year program. The next trade would be the welder. Now, as a welder, uh, first of all, it sounds kind of boring. You just do one little thing, but there's actually many different ways to specialize in this trade. So you can, again, work in many different industries such as construction, industrial and manufacturing. You can be in repairs and maintenance, like for automotive or even heavy equipment. And you can work in the uh, mining industry as well. Yeah, and I feel like welding is like, it's, it's very versatile. You can work for a marine, you can work for fabrication. There's 
there's so many industries that you can apply for if you're a welder. And if you're looking for a program, it is open for international students. You just have to look at this, uh, Saskatchewan Polytechnic if you want to stay in Saskatchewan. SAIT in Alberta. They have it in Niagara College as well. And as well as Algonquin College. So again, the average tuition fee is still around, it goes up to 18000 Canadian dollars per year. And the salary for a welder starts at around $26 per hour as a median wage all over Canada. And mm. later you can make $35 to $40 an hour. Now it depends on where and how you specialize in that field. So what's next? So the next trade that we picked is the heavy duty mechanic. Mm -hmm. Uh, this trade is sort of like a mechanic for cars, but instead you work with larger equipment, so... I have a question. What would you recommend? An automotive or a heavy mechanic? And what's the difference between the two? Uh, I would recommend the heavy-duty mechanic because if you're working with cars in a shop, it can be more interesting, maybe you're more into cars. But the thing with working in a shop, repair shop with cars, everything is very fast paced. Uh, you only have a short period of time that you get to do, let's say, the brake job or change the tires or change the alternator or something like that. And the um, shops bill a certain amount for that task. Now with the heavy duty mechanic, because the machines are much more uh, different and they can vary and the problems that they have can vary uh, they pay actually by the hour for the job so it's less time pressure and it is more more diversified I would say and I feel like they pay the, a, a heavy mechanic more than an auto uh, auto technician right yeah so the average the median salary for the uh, heavy duty mechanic in canada is 34 dollars per hour uh, but you can make 40 50 dollars per hour depending on where you go now the fields that you can work in are number one it's the trucking industry so fixing uh, highway trucks semi trucks you can work in public transportation like for uh, tr uh, transit companies that have buses and such uh, you can work in the farming industry so repairing farming equipment like tractors and combines construction industry uh, excavators and such and then you can be in the resource uh, industry like mining industry in Canada uh, fixing big machines as well and that's actually the program that Felix is looking into the, he wanted to go back to school and take that program but for the school speaking of the school so you're looking at Selkirk College in the west side of British Columbia, a TRU, Thompson River University. There's one in BCIT in Vancouver. And if you want to go up north of British Columbia, there is in Coast Mountain College. And I noticed that most of these programs are in BC and Ontario. What is that? You see Ontario and Quebec has a lot of uh, jobs as well. Um, one more interesting thing about these traits that we mentioned is that because Canada is a very big and resource-rich country, uh, with pretty much all of those traits, you can work in the resource mining oil and gas industry and you can make a lot more money than just being a regular trade uh, uh, working at a 9 to 5 job uh, in that trade so that's an option that you have in Canada that uh, other countries might not uh, give you um, yeah just something to consider next we're going to talk about the uh, civil engineer so this is a diploma program where you go to school for two years and then later you need to do some more uh, schooling uh, I believe um, but the uh, median salary for civil engineers in Canada is $43 per hour and later you can make uh, $50 to $70 per hour so you can make quite a lot of money in that field. Mm -hmm. Now civil engineering is more in the construction infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, sector and then there is also related to that the 
mechanical engineering. Mechanic right? mechanical engineer, which is more focused on manufacturing and uh, equipment, mm -hmm. as well as like designing new products, mm -hmm. um, automotive piping, industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and they make a little bit less, but pretty much the same. So the median wage is $41 per hour and they can also make 50 to $70 mm -hmm. per hour. And for the industry, like if you're a civil engineer, you're most likely in demand across Canada. But for manufacturing, you're looking into uh, Ontario and Quebec, am I correct? Yeah, most of the manufacturing, I would say, is there. Though uh, you can also work as a mechanical engineer in oil and gas which will yeah, be in Alberta, Alberta. for example mm -hmm. for the program so I have a long list here for the program for civil engineer you can check out um, College of New Caledonia they have it in Victoria Kumasan College and for Alberta if you want to get the mechanical engineering you can check out SAFE they have it in Keanu College as well Saskatchewan Polytechnic and for uh, manufacturing let's say Sioux College would be your bet for, for the program. And again, if you're already an engineer back home, let's say you're from the Philippines, so some of my students can go through an assessment because you're already an engineer back home. You have the license. You have to go through the assessment. If you need help with this one, connect with us. We, we do have a mentor in engineering and uh, she can actually explain it to you. How does the assessment um, process for you? And who knows, maybe you don't have to take the program because they got the invitation to apply for the permanent residency in less than a year. So if you're in trades, you do have the the tech uh, accelerated pathway easy for you to get invited for permanent residency so if you want to know more about the engineering one i will be able to have a separate video about that and we can have a live session with the mentor who is an engineer so that you can learn more about it but again if you're thinking to study here get the trade or engineering program and apply as early as possible because it's difficult to get in to to get the spot for you the trades which have been much less popular over the last few years uh, are in high demand still and you can you can um, use it to get into canada get your postgrad work permit and also get a good job that is in demand if you're not made for working in a corporate office environment. Comment below if you're thinking to study a trade or an engineering program. Let me know which one are you going to take in Canada. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.